Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Ken Ma and here I'm posting free Linux tutorials as videos with associated PDF notes and VirtualBox appliances pre-configured so that you can test out the examples and the exercises. Um, if you come here from YouTube and don't have a link for the PDF notes, there's one there on the screen. And if you haven't seen this before, do have a read through, look at my selling points, um, the different playlists I've got. Over the page, my ad hoc video tutorials. I've done the ones in white now. I've just posted recover lost password and I'm about to do installing Arch hard or easy. And then I'll look at Carly. But today we're going to look at Section 7 of my Linux command line for beginners and Windows users. I'll jump to Workspace 1 here. I've got the PDF notes. If you haven't got them, uh, you'll find them on my ice drive in the classroom, which the link takes you to under introduction. They're obviously not there yet until I posted the video. I think I forgot to put the last lot up straight away, but... I saw that eventually. So this is command line for beginners and Windows users. My name is Ken Ma. After viewing it, please like, comment and subscribe. I don't get many likes or comments. I've got quite a few subscribers, over 160 now, I think. So this section is finding text and sorting. These links are on all the notes. That one to my ice drive. That one, well, that one to Ice Drive, actually, if you want to use it yourself. That one to Dropbox, which is excellent. That one to DigitalOcean, where you can run up a, an Ubuntu droplet, they call it, of your own in about five minutes. And it costs you $5 a month to run. And buy me a coffee if you want to support um, development of the next course. So we're looking at finding text and sorting. The objectives at the end of this section, you'll be able to find text within files using grep, describe and use what are called regular expressions. Uh, we also look at the sort command and a few other things like unique, cut and translate. I'm using one of the virtual machines. The CentOS one is fine. That works. That's an old one that I've been using. Mint 20 I've customized and I think everything's there. There is an Ubuntu one, and I think I've mostly got it right, but it's difficult adding everything that you need for the course. Um, so my recommendation would be to use CentOS or Meet. So we start with grep. Grep is finding text within files, as opposed to finding files, which we did in the last section. And the command grep stands for get regular expression and print or well, gets obvious print actually means display on the screen a regular expression as it explains there is a special character string or a string made up of special characters and symbols which allows pattern matching the sort of thing you do when you do a google search now before i start what i normally do is copy scr exp file into my directory and have a look at it. This is just a simple file made up of character strings, mostly A, B and C, but it includes spaces, special characters like asterisk and backslash, upper and lower case. And what we're going to look at is finding text within the file. So to find its simplest example, you can just look for ABC within the XP file. So I can say grep ABC XP file. Now yours might have come up in color. If it did, that's my fault. That's because this alias already exists. You can turn color on with grep by running grep minus minus color. So if I create an alias, grep equals in single quotes, grep minus minus color, spelt the American way, and then I rerun the grep, I get them in red. And if you remember, if you want that to be permanent, 
you put it in your .bashrc file. .bashrc file using the editor, like Nano or Vim, and stack it on the end. Uh, I suspect it's already in there in Mint. It's very difficult to think of everything when you're setting up environments like this. But anyway, set up grep like that if you want to, and then when you run, you'll get colors, which is nice. Now these are common options that you can use with the command and these are examples of using these common options. So for instance, grep minus i is case insensitive. So I get uppercase ABC. C counts. So I get how many lines there are. Seven. N displays the lines numbers of matching lines. So there are matches on those lines. Uh, you can search for multiple files. So I could look for and count case insensitive the string this within all my files. Mm, colors not very good there, is it? Probably a way to change that. So it doesn't search directories, but it search the files. What it doesn't do if you do that is search subdirectories. In the directory temp, there are lots of files and they contain the string this. To get it to search subdirectories, you use R. So if I put IRC or ICR, it doesn't matter. Then it finds all the files. Actually, this appears in a lot of things as temp directory. There are files in the SCR directory which contain that string. <coughs> Actually, if you don't want a zero, what you can do, you can use minus V, which is neat. I thought of that. What we could do is we could pipe that into grep and say lines that don't contain minus v zero and then we get just the ones that have got the file in there that's neat I like that I might put that in the notes oh it's the last one il display only file names that match actually I think that does the same thing <coughs> um, so we don't need that at all um, if we use i CL as opposed to IC we don't get the zeros it depends what you want to see anyway here's an exercise I have a um, I used to have a file that displayed exercise so you can see it on the screen if you're going through the video um, I can do it like that. And it comes. Can't do it like that. Can't spell figlet. There we go. So do the exercise and come back to the video and have a look. And I'll put the answers on the screen. So here are the exercise solutions. And the first one, you look for failed in log file. for misspellings failed in log file and then if you want to count how many lines contain failed you use minus c that will count them to count them irrespective of case you use ic or ci find the entry for your login well i'm logged in as kdm the examples there use train one I could grep for KDM in ETC password. There's my entry. Uh, and if you want to find all the delicate logins, um, for instance, train one, train two, train three, just put train. That finds them. 
OK. Over the page, we'll look at regular expressions. We'll start with the simple ones. Let's um, shrink that and stretch this down here. I'll catch up in a minute. Clear the screen. Oh, you want to sleep here. That's better. There we go. So, these special characters or symbols um, refine the search. I probably showed you this before, but back on my ice drive in classroom in handouts, there's a file called regexp.pdf and this is nicked from a website and this explains about regular expressions there are you can download this if you want keep the pdf file there are 11 special characters the simplest the start of string end of string which is the ones we're going to look at to start with but i'm going to cover them all and then you go down through full stop um, pipe symbol various types of brackets asterisk plus question mark and backslash and over here there are examples of using them and down here there are other clever things that you can do with regular expressions so back to the notes the special characters include the hat symbol which is over the six key dollar which matches the end of a line the full stop which matches any character except slash n a new line now if you remember when we did um, wild cards we whoops sorry I'm in the wrong screen there oh, messed it up this, it is very easy to mess up the setup in there I can't I don't think I can pull it over to the right which is annoying So why has it got a page there? I have messed it up, haven't I? Ah, sorry about that. I'm back in the room. I suppose if I was professional, I'd start the video again, but it takes a long time to make these videos, especially if you keep starting again. What I was trying to say was we went into temp and we searched for files that began with a single character and the word like file. So there, the question mark matches a single character. Now, if you're using a regular expression, a full stop matches a single character, any character, except backslash a new line. And we also did asterisk, where you could say ls um, a asterisk, for instance, and that matched all the file names that began with an A. The asterisk matched anything. Well, here in the regular expression, the asterisk matches zero or more of the previous expression one expression that's often used in with regular expressions is dot asterisk now if you think about it a dot matches any character and an asterisk matches zero or more of the previous character or expression so you get any set of characters if you use that as we'll see in a minute let's go back home and go back up there and have a look Oh, that, as it says there, note that question mark and asterisk, which may be used at the command line, are not used in the same way here. So here's some examples of regular expressions. Now, you don't always have to put regular expressions in quotes, but it's a habit I got into because sometimes you do. And there's no harm if you do put them. And I use single quotes, although quite often double quotes will work in the same way. That is lines that begin with ABC. If I put a dollar on the end there and take away the hat symbol, that's lines that end with ABC. And if I put both, it's lines that contain ABC. Uh, if you want any character between a... Uh, let's go for beginning with there um, and we put a dot there that will match any character 
so you get a something c including a space a backslash an asterisk whatever now you can use an asterisk to match any number of the previous character so if you put a b asterisk c you get a b c but also a b b c three b's four b's whatever this one here is using the dot asterisk as i said to match any set of characters so rather than b there if i put a dot i get anything between an a and a c and then if you want to find special characters like there's an asterisk in the file here asterisk or you want to find a backslash they are special characters they're part of a regular expression so you have to treat them in a special way you can't just say find me um, a asterisk c because an asterisk will match any number of the previous expression so you get aa so what you do is you escape it with the escape character which is one of the regular expressions the backslash and I like this one if you want to find the backslash you escape the backslash like that now these regular expressions these simple ones are supported by grep but if you want to use some of the other regular expressions you have to use egrep extended grep uh, although you can use uh, there we go grep minus uppercase e which does the same thing and this expends grep to use all the regular expressions and it's a good idea I think I've got one in here uh, to make an alias so the egrep gives you colors one thing that egrep does apart from using extra regular expressions it allows you to search for more than one regular expression more than one set of characters uh, simultaneously so you can do this sort of thing I'm going to cheat copy that and paste it in here this doesn't look in password in ETC this is looking password in SCR but this is saying lines that begin with root or begin with UUCP or begin with train A and you come out like that you can't do that in grep but there's a nicer ways of doing that one way of doing that is to change it to look like this actually what happens if you do an up arrow there oh no it does come back like that make a bomb oh it's going to come back on one line but it doesn't you can do it like this you can use the pipe symbol alternation either this or this and you can use the brackets to group things together and if you do that you're saying lines that begin with root or begin with UUCP or begin with train A and the point is that if you try and do that with grep it doesn't work it doesn't tell you it doesn't work which is annoying but it will work if you put minus uppercase E which is sort of extended grep does the same thing there is another version of grep called fgrep fgrep is faster than egrep but fgrep doesn't support regular expressions it just searches for strings so for instance if I bring up that and I go back and make that fgrep it doesn't find anything because it's not looking for regular expressions what it's doing it will look for oh that's interesting I know she comes up like that I'm not sure what's going to happen now it finds a line with a root in it but it's quicker if you're searching very large files gigabytes in size then that's a good idea anyway moving on grep is often used as a filter with a pipe now we know that piping is a process of sending the output 
of one command as input into another. So commands that appear in a pipeline are often referred to as filters, since in many cases they sift through or modify the input passed to them before sending that to standard out, which by default is a screen. So here's some examples. If I do an ls minus l on etc, I get a mix of directories, links, there's a link there, um, flat files. Suppose I wanted to filter it so that I only see directories. I can pipe that. You don't need the spaces, I only put them in the notes so that it stands out. I can say grep, and again, I like to use quotes. Lines that start with a D. And then I could pipe that into less. Told them on the screen. And then I can go up and down with the arrow keys, forwards and backwards, whatever. Um, was it H for help? I can't remember. Yeah, H for help. If you want to. Quit, etc. And Q to quit. Now who here? Uh -huh. I could attempt to pipe that into grep to see who's logged on. But the problem with that is there isn't anybody logged on. One way around that is to use a file in SCR called who file. So what I often do on the course is I suggest people make an alias of who, which actually cats who file. Uh, not like that because I've got three quotes. That one should have been a space. Oh god, done it wrong again, excuse me. Hang on, we'll get there in a minute. Right, back, space. That's better. Now if I type who. Oh dear. Beg your pardon, I'll get there in a minute. SCR slash. That's better. So we're doing who is a cat of SCR who file. That's better. Then when we type who. If we want to run the who command, we escape it, remember, with a backslash. So we can just do who. So now I can run who and filter it to see if trainer is logged on. If he's not logged on, nothing comes up. If he is logged on, you get some output. You can also, I think I showed you this earlier when we did the cron tab, do a ps minus ef everything that's running we get a lot filter that pipe it into grep and look for the cron demon i'll look for the printer like that. now you can use grep as a filter and egrep and whatever in this longer exercise, review exercise, and this contains some hints which suggest you use things like redirection and piping. So more exercises. If I go back, Troll and R, I can search for Figlet, and then I can print that back on the screen. So stop the video, have a go at the exercise, come back. I'll put up the solutions. Alright, welcome back. That's assuming you went off and did the exercise, of course. Um, that's the best way to learn doing the exercises. I will run through the uh, the solutions here. So, number one, have a look at people. Cat people. That's fine. And that contains the string smith. But it says use grep, but remember by default it is case sensitive. So we're using grep um, smith, like that, in people. Or, of course, you could do it. I mean, that's not going to find anything. But if you put minus i, that makes it case insensitive. So that'll give you the same thing. Then it says create a new file m people containing all the lines beginning with the string personal or personnel. Again, use grep and redirection. So we say grep 
we're looking for lines that begin with personal uh, on people and redirecting it well usually you want to check what it's doing before you redirect the output to end people and the other way can you hear the squeak the cat's come in and wants its breakfast just give me a minute pussycat I like to use T if you remember that you don't need spaces there what T does it writes to people um, sorry writes to end people but it also displays the output on the screen and that's really neat that's better I've just stopped and fed the cat this is why all my videos are made up of lots of little pieces bits and pieces I'll make a video later on how I make videos that might be interesting oh another thing I thought I'd mention is that uh, you might be watching this and thinking he makes a lot of mistakes not very professional but this pointless this being a slick video where everything works you learn from mistakes so I learn from mistakes and hopefully you'll learn from watching me correct my mistakes so I leave them in so that was number three um, just check what we've got well we know what we've got because if you do the T you don't have to do number four and cat what you've done because you can see what you've done there which I like number five now append all the lines where the text ends with the string 500 in the file people to the file end people this one's a bit more complicated because what you'll find if you look at the file um, I tend to edit it so if I edit people now if you did my vice section you'll know that if I press ctrl and L it turns on list and I can see that some of these lines dollar marks the end of a line end in 500 and a space so if I just grep for lines that end in 500 I'm not going to get them all it's a bit sneaky I think it came about by accident so I could start by saying grep for lines um, that end in 500 so that would be 500 um, dollar like that. Um, let's just do people first it's always best to to run it first before you um, do the redirection so you can see what you've got now if we cat people there are one two three four lines ending in 500 and I only got two of them that's because they've got a space on the end so what I actually should be looking for is 500 with a space there that still only finds two of them so what you need to do to get it to work is either use egrep which I prefer or grep minus uppercase e only there's more to it than that you can't just put a space after the 500 what you have to do is use a regular expression so what you do is you put a space and an asterisk and what that says is 500 followed by any number it's distracting that by any number of spaces and that finds you all four that's number five there that's the uh, the difficult one here number six confirm the contents of the file by listing the file well we've done that number seven find the IP address of the server it's in the file slash etc slash hosts normally um, and you find the name of the server with host name 
So what we're looking for is hasn't got a real address that for the moment whiskers are in virtual box so we need to search for lines that contain that and pick up the IP address or display the line now the point is if you don't know what the name of the server is I could type in KDM virtual box but a better way to do it is grep for if you remember if you put something in dollar brackets the bash shell runs it as a command so that will expand to be my host name we'll look in etc hosts and we'll return the line that contains the IP address number eight is an example of using egrep to look for two things so in quotes in brackets we're looking for LP or train one within SCR password there's an error in the file down there sorry again I'm not going to re-record the video for that I'll just go across I mean in Vim here just delete it like that so that's the right answer I'll also be supplying the solutions file um, at the end of the course um, that won't work well, it does work but it comes back with train 13 11 12 10 1 so what I did to stop it doing that after the train 1 I put a colon and then I get LP and train 1 And then use the who and grep commands it says so assuming I've got that set up to do to do that I can use who pipe it into grep um, display a count of the number of delegate users do not include root real roots not going to appear if I need a count which is minus C and I want lines that begin with train because I don't want root eight users of on there bingo if you have any questions about the exercises I keep saying nobody has you can email me with questions and now we'll get rid of that um, bring that back down clear the screen hello speak to us and we'll look at sort now the file I'm going to use to sort is in SCR and it's called soup and it looks like this and I can sort it with sort soup oh, I'm sorting in reverse order with sort minus r soup and I can remove duplicate signs with sort minus u soup now this is something that peeved me for a long time when I wrote a script and I couldn't get it to work what happens if we want to save the sorted output so if we sort soup we get that suppose we redirect that back to itself again we don't need the spaces what do you think's in soup now the answer is nothing because what the shell does when it sees the greater than it says if that file exists I'll overwrite it if it doesn't exist I'll create it so it overwrites it with nothing it, it empties it in effect ready to overwrite it uh, and you get nothing now if I redo the copy control and R type copy in to get my copy back the correct way to do that is to use minus O minus O is there 
so that you can in effect redirect the output back to itself and now I've saved soup sorted and soup sort soup soup's useful sort is very useful <laughs> in a pipe so if I go back to who which looks like that because of my alias if you haven't got the alias don't forget you can set one up like that and then test the examples and the exercise actually you'll need that for the exercise so who gives me that I could run who pipe it into grep and say lines that begin with train so I don't want the root user and pipe that into sort and it will sort from the left later on in the exercise we'll um, cut out the first word so you only get train one train one train two and remove the duplicates so the answer to a future exercise will be train one train two train three train four train five but we'll come to that now you can sort using fields now you don't need to sort things with ls minus l because you can do that built into it but uh, I use it as an example. If I do an ls minus l, I get that. If I do an ls minus l and pipe it into sort, it sorts from the left on permissions. Now I want it to sort on size there. Probably biggest one first. So to do that, you give it a delimiter. So you pipe it into sort and well not a delimiter actually the delimiter oh, sorry say that again the del you use a delimiter the delimiter is a space by default in sort and we are looking at the fifth field one two three one two three four five yes the fifth field so to sort it in order i say minus k5 which is the fifth field it didn't do it and the reason it didn't do it is because I didn't tell it to sort um, numerically that the field contained numbers and you can do that with an n now don't put the n between the k and the 5 it likes them to be together put the n before the k and it sorts and then if you want the biggest one first sort it in reverse area or reverse order using R so NRK5 gives me a sort in reverse order on the fifth field. Now the default separator for sort is space. Oh, actually there's an example there. Let me do that example first. Uh, before I look at field separator. It says, here's an example of combining sort with find to display the five largest files in slash file, excluding directories. So this is a lot of stuff we've done here. We're doing find slash file. So it starts there. Types are files, not directories. It's going to execute an ls minus l, minus s, sorry, for block sizes on the file. Throw away the errors to grab null. Pipe it into sort minus nr and pick up the first five lines. So it shows you the first or the five biggest files in the var directory takes a few seconds to run so there's the block size on the left and those are the file names now you might need a full separator for sort for ex instance suppose you want to sort SCR password we do less on SCR password the password is made up of fields which are colon separated so it's the username the password which isn't there anymore the user ID group ID a comment etc if you want to sort that perhaps on Uh, 
um, I've got minus NK4 on the fourth field. I've uh, forgotten the sort. Deary me. Right. On the fourth field, well, one, two, three, four. I want to sort on the group ID there. But it's not doing it because it's looking for space as a field separator. So what you do is you tell it um, it's minus T here. It's as if the people who wrote these um, utilities didn't talk to each other because it's minus F in ORC, it's minus D in CUT. Here it's minus T to give it a, a field separator. And that will sort on the fourth field. So 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. right down to 6,000 at the end. And that's how you use the separator. That's in an exercise later on as well. Um, there's another command here which is useful. You can sort minus u soup and get rid of the duplicates. You can also sort soup and pipe it into unique with various options. So unique will remove the duplicates. Unique minus C will count. So you can see there are two ham and two P. Unique minus D will show you the duplicates, which are ham and P. And unique minus U will show you the unique options. So I need that. And there's a little exercise there. Now what we're looking for, it says sort the SCR password file into descending order on the third field, the user ID. So the password file in SCR, don't use the real one, use this one. It looks like that. So we're sorting on the third field. That's the third field, the user ID. Now display only the line with the highest delegate user ID. So the highest delegate user ID, I think, is that one. So the answer to the exercise is that line. So I want you to find and display that line. Um, the reason this came about was a guy came on the course and he needed to find the next user ID because he was editing the password file to add new users. You don't use that. Do that, sorry. You use commands like add user or user add. Um, but that's when I made up the exercise. So find that line first and we'll find just the number in a moment. I'm not going to display exercise, I'll just stop there. So here are the solutions. The first one well, obviously you're going to sort SCR password as I did back here somewhere, but actually on the third field. But we want the line with the highest ID. So, and we only want train users as well. Uh, so it's only the line with the highest delegate user ID. So the delegate users are those with train. So, um, what I've done here is I look for lines that begin with train within the file scr slash password. Sorry, I've got another mistake down here. It's because the files. The exercise answers used to be in a shared directory called SCR, but because we're not sharing machines, I put them in SCR. So that's okay. When you get the answers, they'll be right. Okay, back up here. Um, so password and then pipe that 
into sort minus n3 do which will give you the output in order now what we want is that line there but just that line and what I should have done perhaps well, I could use tail there to get the last line is if I use as in the answers there are to bring that up to the front I can then pipe it into head minus one and I'll just get the first line and that's the answer or you can do it this way you can sort the file pipe it into grep and then pipe it into head one doesn't matter which way around you do it you get the same thing right, next we'll look at cropping text right, I've just tidied the screen up there now we look at cut the cut command may be used to copy fields or columns from a file uh, if we look at people I can cut out the first eight characters by saying cut minus C for characters one to eight from people Now that's all very well but the first um, department perhaps I don't know the others look like departments I don't know what ground floor is doesn't matter um, has been truncated so another way of doing that would be say give me field one in fact you have field two as well comma two and then I just get the first two columns from the file and cut also uses delimiters so suppose you want to cut out the first word in SCR password which is the username but only the train users so I could use grep to find lines that begin with train in SCR password pipe it into cut minus one for the first field doesn't work because the field separator is not the default it's a I think the default's a tab it's colon so here we need now it's not minus T as it was with sort it's minus D so if we put minus D colon which I'll see in the notes I put that the other way around but I'm not sure it matters no it doesn't so you can say field one minus D colon or minus D colon field one and you just get the first one and then you could sort that by piping that into sort it says here if you want to use spaces as a delimiter use minus d space quote quote space quote and the reason that's there is because there's another exercise here and in this exercise again sort the password file into the third field the user id and find the line that we came up with so if i go back to sort so find that line the user ID it says you sort grep head and cut to we've done that now list the login names only of the delegates oh no I beg your pardon sort it on the third field and display only the hell it we just want that 60020 sorry got a bit of a muddle there don't know my exercises so it says you sort grep and head which we've already done uh, pipe that into cut and cut out that so the answer to the exercise is that number the highest user id then it says list login names only of delegates logged on so use a combination of who grep and cut with a pipeline to pull out the first word and it says note that the delimiter here is a space character and it says back over the page to use a space character do it like that single quote space single quote and then rerun this command but this time sort the output and remove any duplicates 
So the answer to the first exercise is that number. The answer to the third exercise is a list of sorted delegate users logged on. Unique ID. So it's train 1, train 2, train 3, train 4, train 5. Okay, have a go at that. Oh, well done if you've uh, completed the exercises. And here's what we want. So if I go back and find my line that had grep in it, that brings up the first one, but I only want the first word. So I can pipe that into cut and say minus F. Is it? Oh, sorry, I want the third word. Minus F3. Um, F3 doesn't work because the delimiter is a space. No, it's not. Sorry. Wrong one to go then. Ah, dear. There we go. Let me just get the number. The second one, take who and pipe it into grep. The best way to do these is build them up. So type that into trap and look for lines that begin with train. And we got that working. Then pipe it into cut because we want to cut out just field one. I was getting ahead of myself with the last one. Now that doesn't work because of the delimiter. So we sell it the delimiter is a space and then we pipe that into sort and remove the duplicate so we only want unique there we go. and that's the answer to number three right I've tidied up the right hand side of the screen uh, we're on page 11 there's five pages left just no exercises, just assorted commands at the end here. Starting with TR. TR uh, is a good example of the use of typing as it will not accept as its input uh, its input from a file. And you can use it to translate text in a file into various different... I mean, you can encrypt files if you want to translate but the simplest use of translate is to go from upper to lower case in this example here this source soup removes the duplicates and then translates it into uppercase well it would if I still had a soup if I go back and find my copy there it is and then up arrow Convert soup into uppercase. Um, you can also do that with A to Z to A to Z rather than lower and upper. Sort using characters. Um, this sort of thing. If we pull out the train users from the SCR password file and then sort them. Whoops, wrong side there this side and then sort them what happens is um, that's what I copied was it let's uh, try that again copy that and paste it there that's better now what you get now is one and then 10 11 12 13 so that's why it dubs things. In fact, that's why I might, uh, when I label the course, use um, for these, I'll use 0 to 9 and then I'll use A, B, C if I had any more. Because then when you sort them, you get the right answer. But you can sort that. What you do is you sort it, but you say you want in numeric order and use the key fields and sort on field one 
six characters, comma, to field one, seven characters. And then it comes out in the right order. Like I said, they're just odd commands in here. Expand and unexpand. This command expand is to process a text stream and remove all instances of tab and replace them with a specified number of spaces. What does it do that for? The default being eight. So if I cat people, pipe it into expand and then redirect it into end people. Now if you remember, if I edit people and turn on list, these are tabs, control and I. So it's got lots of tabs in it. Quit from there. And cat people. Pipe it into expand. And redirect the output to end people. And then edit end people. It looks the same on the face of it, but when you do a control and L, these are spaces, not tabs. So it's expanded the tabs as spaces. Um, you can also do unexpand, which works the other way around and converts spaces to tab characters. Come out of there, clear the screen. What we've got. Back over here, there are some more. There's, there's join and paste, which you can use to join um, files together. In SCR, let's see if I see it into SCR, it'll be easier. Uh, if I cat join one, it looks like that. If I cat join two, it looks like that. And if I join the two together, they join on a common first column, which is the number. So join one, join two. And I could redirect the output into a file, but here I can just show it on the screen. So it matches um, the two files together. Split splits an input file into a series of files without altering the original output. So if we look at log file, let's go back home and do a wc minus l on log file. If you remember, it's got just over 4,000 lines. Now if we want to spit it into 1,000 lines, so it would make four files of 1,000 lines and a fifth file of 111 lines, we could say split minus L a thousand, the number of lines. Log file, what we're going to split into N log file. And what you get is N log file A, B, C, D, and E. You get five files. And if we look at the number of lines in those files by doing a number and WC minus L on N log asterisk four files with a thousand and the last one with 111. Then there's a couple more. There's reformat FMT. If you do a less on Linux, the file, it comes out like that. But if you want to format it so that it's not as wide, for instance, you change the width, you can use FMT and say minus minus WIDTH. Let's have a width of 40. On Linux and perhaps pipe that into less to hold it on the screen and then you get the file the 40 character width Q 
computer grip from this. And the last one, OD, takes an optal dump. So you can dump a file. You can dump binary files as well. Uh, it can dump in different formats, including octal, decimal, floating point, hex, and character format. So there's a simple example. You say OD minus B for binary. In SCR, we'll take a dump of join1. And there's a binary dump of what's in join1. Over the page, uh, we're going back to regular expressions now. So if I've still got exp file in here, I haven't. Oh yes, I have. There it is. Actually, I like to tidy it up, so I'm going to get rid of... I won't use an alias if I've got one. I'm going to get rid of all the files that begin in L. That's better. Sort of back where we were. Okay, a regular expression, regex or regexp for short. Special text string for describing a search pattern. Wild cards on steroids, I like that. So there are 11 characters with special meanings. There's a list of them all, and here they are here. So you've got the start of the line, the end of the line, which we already did. Full stop and asterisk, which we already did. Uh, the pipe symbol for alternation, either one or the other, which we did along with the logical grouping, which is the brackets. Then you've got plus one or more of the previous expression, question mark, zero or one of the previous expression, a backslash, which precedes a symbol, makes it a literal character, which is what I just did actually. I used a backslash on the RM so that it didn't use an alias, it just made it a literal RM. And you've also got curly brackets which can be used for quantifying. So the default version of grep has only limited regular expression support. So in order for all of these to work, you need to use egrep, or you can use grep minus e. So here's uh, some examples. I think there are examples of all of these. So to start with, uh, let's catch exp file and let's egrep and look for for instance aac or acc within exp file and we find those two strings well we would if i could spell egrep i've got an alias for egrep in here oh, i still can't spell it though Sorry about this. Egrep. There we go. Two. Now, if you want to match either expression, you can make it a bit more clever by using the curly brackets. No, sorry, ordinary brackets, isn't it? The wrong side there. Keep doing that. So here we say grep, but now we want A uh, with an uppercase B and C, or a lowercase b and a c bracket like that and that gives us those two well it's more than two actually anything with a b c or a uppercase b c which is there like i said this is just examples of how you might use uh, every time i type something in here it goes to single page up here are the options it stopped doing continuous pages for some reason because I typed into it which is annoying here are some other simple examples using the square brackets to match any character we could say we want lines that start with an A and then either an uppercase or a lowercase b you put them in square brackets followed by a C and we get those if you want not so the other lines you put the little hat symbol inside the square brackets and that will match uh, A B C with any case of B 
This one we did before, using an asterisk to match zero or more of the previous expression. So in the quotes here, we're going to put, starts with an A, and then a B, any number of Bs, and then a C. Now we can change that if we wanted to say one or more of the previous expression. So that one is zero or more of the previous expression. So you get AC. If we put a plus there instead of the asterisk, we don't get AC because it's one or more of the previous expression. And if we put a question mark there, it's zero or one of the previous expression. It all depends what you want to see. And I think that's given you an example of all 11 characters. And on the end, I tacked on a last exercise. Um, this looks at the file people. And suggest you examine the contents and then find lines containing Evans or Marla, Smith, Smythe or Smythe, Brown, Browen or Bron. Uh, find the line containing this string, including brackets in the log file. And find the line containing the character asterisk in the log file. And then combine 5 and 6 to find both expressions within the log file. So, have a go at that, and I'll find the answers. Right, hopefully you've done the exercise, and um, the answers, in this case, are over the page. There's the exercise solution. I was wrong, actually. I haven't given you examples of everything. Here are some more examples here. So this one is to find lines using the dot and the asterisk to match any set of characters. So anything between the B and the C. I didn't find anything because when you copy from a PDF file, sometimes the quotes don't copy. I don't know what it thinks they are. But if it doesn't work and you're sure it's right, change the quotes. And then the curly braces is the one we didn't do. So here you can use the curly brace to match any number of the preceding character. So A, B, suppose you want to see 3 Bs, you get A, B, B. If you want to see 4 Bs, you put a four there. If you want to see three or more, so three and four, you put a comma after the three. And that gives you both lines. And then to find lines, you can match n times, but more than m times. So for instance, if you said, between 2 comma 3, 2 and 3, you get 2 and 3, but you don't get 4. And that's the last page. There's the exercise solutions. So you can do the pipe to say Evans or Marla. Um, you can use a pipe within Smythe there to spell it with an I or a Y. And a question mark on the end, because sometimes... There's an E on this end of Smythe, and sometimes there isn't. You can find Brown. Um, so the W might not be there. The E might not be there. Um, you can find these ones, but the brackets you have to escape with a backslash. Because they're special characters. Same thing with the asterisk. And then both within the same command, you put a pipe between the two and split them. Oh, that should be enough. Regular expressions, it's usually enough for everybody. 
Um, we finish up by going back here. So next week, well, I hope to do how to install Arch the hard way and the easy way. And then on Friday, publish um, Backup and Restore using TAR and CPIO. That's a simple section, as is file permissions. Just to finish off with, I'm still not getting any feedback from anybody. You know, I get subscribes, I get the odd like, I get one or two comments. Um, I don't know if anybody's been recommending me and sharing me on Facebook, but certainly I don't get any feedback, questions or suggestions. It's very hard if nobody interacts, you know, on a, a proper classroom course, you can ask questions of the trainer and he will ask questions of the delegates, but I'm not getting any feedback from you lot, but uh, never mind. Um, that's enough for today, I think, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.